Hey guys, Andy here, and today on Andy Talks Japan, I'm going to be talking to you about how much I saved up for to study abroad in Tokyo. So, just a little bit of context on me and where I'm at and all this kind of stuff. So, right now I'm studying abroad in Tokyo at Lakeland University of Japan, which is located in Shinjuku. Now, this is essentially, I guess you'd call it like a satellite campus. Uh, the main campus is located in Sheboygan, Wisconsin. They have a satellite campus out here in Tokyo, and that's where I'm going to school at. So for me, I'm also on the GI Bill, so I get essentially like a monthly housing allowance. Uh, but it does take a couple months to uh, kind of process and get going, especially if it's your first time uh, in, in uh, new school or just in school in general. So it can take a little bit of time to uh, <clears throat> get that going. So you have a decent amount in savings I'd recommend uh, saving up as much as you can so for me um, I had a pretty healthy amount in savings but I ended up spending a lot of that on uh, you know just stuff I needed to get myself out here in Japan equipment and other things and also a lot lost a lot of a lot of it to uh, taxes so I didn't really have a whole lot of money um, once everything was all said and done once I came out here to Tokyo uh, I think altogether I had probably less than a thousand dollars, which, uh, looking back on it now, I definitely do not recommend you coming out with that low amount of money, um, especially if it's going to take a while for you to either get like a part-time job or um, whatever the case may be. You know, if you're on the GI Bill like me, if you go in through like a Mex scholarship or something like that, or any kind of scholarship, it may take a little bit for uh, things to process. So. Um, the general rule of thumb is obviously the more you save, the better your, your quality of life will be. And that goes across the board for any study abroad program. And, uh, you know, for me, uh, I definitely want to recommend if you are going to save up to come out to Tokyo or just about anywhere in the world, really. Um, but definitely in Tokyo, I'd recommend saving up at least $3,000, uh, $5,000 ideally. But I think at least $3,000 will get you uh, comfortably by here until uh, some other checks and scholarships and whatever else start kicking in. So <clears throat> for me, like I said, I'm on the GI Bill, so I do get a, a monthly housing allowance. But uh, since this is my first semester here at Lakeland, it takes a while for everything to process through the VA. And uh, at the time of this recording, they just switched over to a new uh, housing allowance um, program or format or whatever. So there was a lot of changeover involved with that. So that uh, further delayed things. But I'm happy to say I'm gonna be getting uh, my check. Uh, it'll be Saturday, my time. So in a couple more days, I'm getting that, uh, that sweet okane, that sweet money. So yeah, um, but if you're wondering like how I was able to survive for about three months on less than $1,000, well, a lot of that is due in part to Obviously, shrewd spending. Um, I live in a wonderful guest house out in Nakano, Nakano Guest House. I'll be doing a video on that in the future. And uh, it's very cheap living. It's very close to uh, school. So, um, you know, train fare is not too bad. And, uh, you know, just spending as little as possible on meals. Um, because the guest house, you know, the kitchen space and food storage space is a little limited. It's kind of hard to cook, you know, do like meal prep and stuff like that because there's less storage space for it. So that's kind of one of the drawbacks of living in a guest house is just less food storage space. Um, so I got to eat out a bit more, get like bento from the Gambini and other places. But, uh, you know, a lot of the savings and stuff is transferred due to like rent, which is um, the full price would be about $320 American. But uh, the first two months are discounted, depending on when you come in. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty nice, not going to lie. But uh, another way you can uh, make money out here, and I'll get into more detail on this later, is uh, if you're coming here, um, be sure to fill out the Autobito form, which is uh, a form that will allow you to uh, work part-time on a student visa. Um, even if you don't plan on working out here, it's always good to have in your back pocket just in case you need to make a little extra cash or just something happens because you never know. But if you fill out that form, it'll allow you to work part-time out here in Japan. And again, I'm going to talk a bit more about it in a future video, but uh, 
you work part time, be able to earn a little bit of extra cash and you won't be so stressing. So yeah, again, I came here with less than a thousand dollars, managed to make it through, you know, my savings and uh, we'll just say the kindness of others. <laughs> I don't want to get into much more detail than that. And uh, at the end of the day, I guess uh, if you guys are looking to uh, come out here to Tokyo or just just about anywhere in the world, really, um, I would recommend saving up at least three, $3,000 and uh, 5000 ideally. So, yeah, with that said, guys, this is the Andy Sign. Sign it for now. And as always, we'll see you next time. Catch you later, guys. Bye. And so if you have any other questions about studying abroad in Japan, I'm doing a whole series of questions on it. So be sure to leave them in the comments down below in the boopy -de boops. <laughs> All right. Just about over. All right. Bye, guys.